Welcome to Tour Confidential. This is our season end, our year-end edition of the show. I'm Jeff Ritter. And for this special edition, I'm pleased to be joined by two of my Golf.com colleagues. It's Dylan DeChair and Josh Burhau. It has been some kind of year, guys. But as we sit here ready to put it in the books, uh, it's time to reflect on memories of the year that was. Why don't we start with you, Dylan? If you're going to look back at 2017 and you get to pick one memory that stands out above all others, where do you start? I go back to Augusta. It seems like a while ago now, but what happened on the 15th hole to Sergio Garcia stands out to me as the biggest takeaway from 2017. Everything up to that point, Sergio's career was defined by things falling just short, going just the wrong way. And, you know, he steps up to his second shot a couple hundred yards away, steps into a seven iron uh, and hits it off the pin. It was like the best shot of the year. And in another universe, in another Sergio universe, the ball could have bounced off the pin, gone who knows where, like Tiger's ball did on the same hole uh, a few years ago. But instead, sticks it, his eagle putt falls just in, uh, and the rest is history. Yeah, it was, a, that was, a, it was like an anti-Sergio parallel universe or something mm -hmm. happening in the final round of the Masters. It was a feel-good story. Good pick. What do you got? Yeah, for me, it's the back nine of the British Open for Jordan Spieth. And all the craziness, the up and downs that came with that whole round. I was, I was there at Royal Birkdale for it. I walked the front nine with Jordan Spieth and Kucher. Real boring front nine. Jordan's three over. They go to the, they take, at the turn, they're even. And I go into the clubhouse, or I go into the media center. I need a bite to eat, and then I'm going to run out there and watch. You're hungry. I'm hungry. And uh, you get to the 13th hole. Jordan Spieth goes way right, and we know everything that happens there. It's the circus. He's running up the hill, down the hill. You have the aerial shots trying to figure out where he is. And I'm watching, and I say, I got to get out there. I got, and then I run out, and you know, Jordan bogeys. He goes down one to Kucher. We think, oh, no, is this the 2016 Masters again? And turns out he goes... He almost aces 14, goes eagle, birdie, birdie, and third leg of the career grand slam, just like that. Those are two great picks for, for memorable moments. Um, with those off the board, I'm going to go with Justin Thomas. Uh, not at the PGA. I'm going to go with the U.S. Open. Um, I witnessed his round of 63 at Aaron Hills, and I felt like that was a wild third round. There was uh, several lead changes and, and things happening. It just felt like everybody was making a move on moving day. But there was something about his round that I think, looking back on it, that was, that was really what ignited the second half of his mm -hmm. year. He didn't win that week at Aaron Hills. It kind of faded on Sunday. But as I look at it now, I feel like that was the moment where he figured out how he was going to win a major. Had, ended up happening one major li later. But for him, that was just kind of the launching point of taking a good year into a great year. So for me, that was one that I'll remember. That was maybe the most exciting part of that U.S. Open was the Saturday rather than the Sunday. The action wasn't quite as intense. Yeah. But Saturday, everyone was on the Yeah, board. he hit that three wood into 18 to set up the eagle. And it was just that was as loud as it got the entire week. And that really, you know, Sunday was good. But I, I feel like Saturday was really the day at that tournament. So uh, good moments all around. Uh, if we're going to talk about one other thing, though, in the media, there's always stories that slip through the cracks. So let's take one more crack at this. If uh, there's one story that you feel was underreported this year, or that maybe it's going to be forgotten, if not for this edition of Tour Confidential, what would be your story? People might not say this is necessarily underreported, but just a couple weeks ago, President Trump played golf with Tiger Woods and Dustin Johnson and Brad Faxon. He wasn't as crucial part of the story. People certainly reported on this, but I think... There were so many angles to this story that were compelling that there's no way to cover all of it. You know, we still had, at this point had not seen Tiger Woods in competition. We hadn't really even seen him hit a golf ball. Right. President Trump, there have been mysteries around his golf game. Is he a two handicap? Is he a scratch golfer? Is he a 10 handicap? Uh, not to mention, we've got Tiger. Is he out driving Dustin Johnson? There were so many little nuggets that came out of this. Um, and then, of course, Brad Faxon. We can't leave him out completely. But... As much reporting as was done on this story, you know, it happened on a Saturday. I still feel like not enough attention was paid to it. I had completely forgotten about it. But Faxon did quite a media tour afterwards. I felt like he was everywhere talking about it. That's a good pick. What's, your, what's yours, Josh? Uh, underreported. Borderline under, forgotten. Borderline underreported. Maybe correctly reported, evenly reported. I'm going to say Stacey Lewis winning, her, uh, winning the Portland Classic and donating her entire check to Hurricane Harvey Relief Funds. And I think what's so cool about that story is that's her first win in three years. And she's a Houston native, still lives there. 
her husband's a coach, Houston women's golf team, and so when Hurricane Harvey hit, she wanted to do something like a lot of athletes did to give back. That's when she said, I'm going to donate my entire winnings from this week, and then she wins. How often does that happen? I mean, just it's like a made-for-TV movie. Hollywood ending. Yeah. A great pick. Uh, I'll give you one that I think it was reported, but I just don't think we've heard the last of it, and that is uh, the controversies around the golf ball. I think this year, Tiger Woods taking a stance on, on the golf ball flying too far, and joining the chorus of other players. And then you have the CEO of Titleist, Wally Uline, of course, taking the other side. I just think this controversy is brewing. I know we, we, it was reported a lot this year, but I just think that's a story that's going to carry into next year and turn into an even bigger story is what do we do to preserve uh, the best golf courses or classic golf courses around the world? Is it the golf ball? Is it the golf club? Is it fitness? It's reality it's probably a combination of things but i just think with players now speaking out about it this thing is it's brewing it's, it's building to something it's not going away anytime soon that topic that's for it's sure. not but we are uh at least for the for the rest of 2017 so on behalf of my colleagues thanks a lot for watching tour confidential this year we will see you in 2018